Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. It's been a long time since I filmed at the desk here. I made a video about a year ago talking about how I package up plain white envelopes for TCG Player, and I wanted to update that because the process has changed a bit, and I believe I have perfected it. Yes, perfection. And I measure that by not having received back any envelopes that I've sent out for TCG Player that were my fault for them to come back. Now, you will always have obnoxious Temi buyers on TCG Player who don't know where they live, they don't know their address, and so the envelope will get sent back to you, then you get to put more postage on it and ask them, hey, can you be sure about where you live? And then they say, oh yeah, golly, I forgot where I lived. And then they give you the real address and you send them the envelope and it goes through. So, when I am packing orders, let's say the first order I've got, it's eight cards. Yes, they want eight of these gray salads. Why do they want so many gray salads? So what I generally do is I'll take, you know, four, maybe five cards, and I'll throw it in a sleeve. And I'll take the other four, and I'll throw it in a sleeve. So up to eight cards, I use this method. Now, I use shipping shields because I can stamp my own thing on there which also prevents other people from reusing them. <laughs> so the thing about eight cards in a shipping shield is that gets you right up against your quarter inch limit for machinability for first class envelopes with the U.S. Postal Service. So eight cards. So put them in there, give them a little tap to get them to seat. I'm going to grab my tape. Hold on, hold on. I'll write it and I'll do it live. I put the tape on there. And I put it in the bag, the team bag, seal it up. All right, now you got cards in a sleeve, in a shipping shield, in a bag. So they ought, they're, they're not impervious to water, but they are highly resistant. So now you can pretend with me that here's your packing slip because God help me, the sellers who do not put a packing slip when I order stuff, it drives me nuts. When I receive something, and this is really bad on eBay, you buy cards on eBay and people just like send you cards in an envelope and it's like, what is this? How do I know who to give feedback to? How do I, how do I manage this? So the way I do it with one shipping shield, I put it horizontally on the page. Stick it down with a sticker. Why do you stick it down with a sticker, Craig? Well, I had an instance a few months ago where a buyer messaged me on TCG Player and they said, hey, uh, I just got the envelope and there was nothing in it. And I said, well, do you mind waiting a couple of days and you know maybe the USPS will get the contents to you? And lo and behold, like four days later, he messages me again and he says, hey, uh, the rest of the contents of the envelope, it got here and they had put it like in a plastic bag and the postman had brought it to his door. And the reason they were able to do that is because all of this was connected together, and if this were a real packing slip, it would have the address of the buyer here. And so it was still able to get to the buyer, okay? So if we were doing this with an envelope, you know how to fold this. Come on, I use number 10 top flights. I know there are some sellers who try to use those tiny little, little teensy tiny envelopes, but you know, I run my top flights through the printer, I use a mail merge routine in MS Word so that it prints my return address and the buyer's mailing address directly on the envelope. Then I can't screw up transcribing them onto the envelope. So that's how I do it for up to eight cards. And remember that eight card limit is because that's where a shipping shield gets too fat for regular machinability once you package it inside an envelope. Okay, what about more than eight? Let's say somebody comes along they order 11 gray salads. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide it into five, I'm gonna divide it into six. So, you know, about three here. I'll put about three in that one. You know, I'll put about three here. And again, sometimes up to about five. About five is where I'm comfortable putting them all in one sleeve together. Obviously, if you order something nice, like an ancient copper dragon, it's gonna get its own sleeve. It's fancy enough for that. So there's the six in there. And that was the five. This is the six. There we go. Get a couple pieces of tape. Close them up. You can buy these shipping shields with a little adhesive strip on them, but they're considerably more expensive. I don't think it's worth it. Maybe you would. Seal this up. Seal up the second one. Now. Oh, get that. Okay, now we're gonna take our pretend packing slip. 
And instead of doing it horizontally, like we did for a single, we're going to do it vertically. And you notice what I just did. I press them to the insides. So this one's pressed over to the right and this one's pressed over to the left. And that way, when I put them together, they can't shift around to get on top of each other. If, if I were to package them like this with the little extra flaps of plastic here, they could conceivably get on top of each other and they violate that quarter inch machinability limit. Okay. So you push them to the inside and then I just line them like that. I grab a couple stickers put them on there, stick them down. Remember, I've refined this to the point where it has been a very, very long time since I've had anything returned to me. Now, fold it up and you're gonna have to fold it tight on here because this height, this distance here is right at the size of a number 10. So it'll fit in, the flap will close, it'll be fine, but um, it won't, the, the flap won't close just as simply as um, the first one you did. Now, the thing about this, again, remember, eight card is the thickness machinability limit for shipping shields. So if you got two of them in here, you can go up to 16 cards. So this works from nine to 16. Remember, this one works from one to eight, nine to 16. What about when you get above 16? Someone says, Craig, I need all the gray salads. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 gray salads and on up. 17 and on up, the sky's the limit. Now you do eventually hit a point where it's better to just put them in a bubble mailer instead of first class envelopes. But 17, okay. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide it into three stacks. So we're gonna go two, four, six. And we're gonna two, four, six. Two, four, five. All right, five, six, six. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more of these team bags. I'm gonna start packaging them. Approximately equal stacks, okay? Notice this one, it's on the left side of the bag. No penny sleeves, just seal it up in the team bag. This one, right side of the bag. It'll become apparent why here in a minute. Now, again, you order 18 ancient copper dragons from me. Well, I'm not putting them in an envelope. They're going in a box. But you order some nice cards that still end up going in an envelope. Yeah, you can put uh, penny sleeves in here. Shifted to the right, shifted to the right, shifted to the left. It'll make sense in a minute. All right, this is your pretend packing slip. What we're going to do is get our label. These are just plain 2 inch by 2 inch labels. Fold the flap under, stick it down on here with, eh, you know, around a quarter inch gap to the side here. You guys like this lighting? I actually brought, bought some decent lighting equipment finally. The next time I get on the whiteboard, you'll really notice a difference. It was just too dark in that last whiteboard video. Second one, tuck the flap under, stick it to the paper. Got it? And if you get your spacing here correct, then when you go to your third one, You'll have about the same spacing over there. Tape it to the second one. It'll be fine. Don't worry. This is just so they can't shift around inside the envelope. Now, what I do for these where I'm not putting them in a shipping shield is I take just a blank piece of paper. We'll pretend this one is blank. Remember, we're pretending this one is our packing slip because please include a packing slip. All right. I take a blank piece of paper and it's just for extra padding. Okay. Line it up. Line it up. Fold it over and this will fit this dimension is smaller because there's no shipping shield so it's smaller than it was on the previous one when we had these sitting vertically okay so it'll fit in an envelope just nice extra bit of padding put it in the envelope put your stamps on it Craig how many stamps so what I'm gonna do is as this video goes live on YouTube I'm gonna go publish over on the patreon my postage cheat sheet that I use that has all of the numbers for, if I get an order, for instance, of 40 cards, how many go in each slot? How many extra ounce stamps does that take? Because you can go up to, what is it, three and a half ounces in a first class envelope. So you have to stay within the three and a half ounce limit in the envelope. You have to stay within the quarter inch machinability limit. 
You also need to get the cards there without them being destroyed. So I will be uploading for my patrons the postage cheat sheet over to Patreon that I use to pack orders. And it goes all the way up to something like 130 card order. I just arbitrarily cut it off there. No, you cannot fit 130 cards in one envelope. At some point, you have to spill over to a second envelope because you run out of weight and you run out of thickness for machinability. And it's cheaper to spill over to a second envelope than it is to go ahead and go up to a minimum $4 under four ounce bubble mailer. Now, at some point, you get enough cards that even if they're garbage five cent cards, it's cheaper to just send them in a bubble mailer than to keep adding additional envelopes, additional first class stamps, additional extra ounce stamps. So I will have all that stuff on the cheat sheet over on Patreon. Patrons go over there and check that. I'll make a separate video for you guys of how to interpret that sheet and use it. But this is working great for me. Like I said, it has been many, many months since I've had an order return that was my fault again timmy's don't even know where they live so yes they will always mess up their addresses and you will be out the additional shipping to put another new stamp on there to get it to them once you can jog their memory and help them to remember where the hell they live but that's life let me know what you think guys anything you missed uh one last thing uh you want to use um top loaders yeah you can do that i mean they're literally the same size as a shipping shield I mean, can you see that? They're literally the same size. They're almost the same weight. They're about the same thickness. The thing I don't like about top loaders is you really can't cram eight cards in here. The limit is about four to five before you really run the risk of like mangling the cards trying to get them in here. So that's why I like shipping shields is you can go up to eight. But maybe if you had a really great deal on these, you could find them really cheap. You could use them for orders up to four five cards maybe you could do that but that's why i use shipping shields instead of top loaders let me know what you think what you're doing problems you see anything else questions comments patrons go get the cheat sheet for postage off of the patreon thanks to everyone who makes this content possible especially my very 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 generous supporters on patreon i love them all and appreciate everything they do for me like comment share and subscribe and join me on final trade